In this section, I want to talk about the available options for creating fog. I have the SOLIDWORKS part light bulb open. This is an example where we have a lamp with a lampshade, a table, and then we have a light bulb with some various options that we're going to talk about. For this example, what we want to do is hide conductor one, conductor two, and the filament. So we're going to go ahead and hide those three components and notice that we still have the glass for our light bulb as well as a sketch point in sketch 21 that was created to help us locate. In order to create fog, we need to add a light. So we're gonna to go to view, lights and cameras, and we're gonna add a spotlight. Now with the spotlight, I'm gonna select keep light when seeing changes and take a look at my available options. So you'll notice that there are some options here. We can lock it to the model and we can give various numerical inputs to help locate this. The first thing I want to do is I want to move this light around so that my point is actually going down into the table and the light itself is up inside of my lampshade. So as I rotate this around, I want to make sure that this light is located roughly inside where I would expect it to be. We also need to determine how wide we want this beam to be. We can make it quite a bit wider and let the lampshade determine where it's going to be shaded. I've checked the option to keep light when scene changes, so now I'm going to go over to my SOLIDWORKS tab, make sure that it's on in SOLIDWORKS. If I turn it off, then you can see that it gets rid of the light inside of my SOLIDWORKS environment. This information only has an effect on what we see in the modeling window. It doesn't have any effect on what happens when we render. On the Photo View 360 tab, we want to make sure that we have it on in Photo View. There's some various options for controlling the brightness of the light, as well as a soft edge, whether or not we want the light to have a sharp, crisp edge on scenes such as the table. So I'm going to turn this up to 46 degrees. So this is the max amount that I can turn it to. Then we have a shadows option. I'm going to go ahead and leave these settings as default for my light radius and my shadow quality. And the next thing is a fog option. Once we select fog, there are two things that we can control. The distance away from the light source that the fog is, and this is controlled by the distance inside of our light cone. So basically from the point our light is created down to this green ring where it ends. If we were to pull this up to the table, this is going to be where 100% is located. Go ahead and pull it all the way down to the ground. If you have trouble with this snapping to geometry like it does, you can always go back to your basic tab and take a look at your coordinates. We're going to be focusing on the coordinate in the x direction and the z direction in relation to my initial points. x is at 0, so this x should be at 0 as well. z is currently at 0.01, so this z should be at roughly 0 as well. As we rotate our model around, you can see that they're roughly located above each other. A lot of times if you're trying to create a light inside of geometry, it's going to be easier to use these values. So back on our Photo View 360 tab, the two things that we can manipulate with fog control the distance inside of our cone, as well as the fog quality. Because we have a lampshade that is potentially porous, and we have a table that we're going to be shining across, I want to turn my fog quality up. The fog quality controls the light streaks as they shine through components. For instance, if you have objects that are obstructing the light, you want to determine how good of a resolution or how well Photo V360 actually calculates these by controlling the quality. Let's go ahead and say OK. Make sure that we have perspective turned on. And let's render our scene. First thing I'm going to do is select a preview window. A preview window will give you a pretty good idea of the fog and its location, even if you don't have the same quality as a final render. So here we can see that the fog quality, as well as those light streaks as they're going over objects, are looking pretty good. We have some lines that show you where some internal structuring is done, and we have some shadowing from our components here. Because the preview window gave me some good information, I'm going to go back to Lights and Cameras, Properties, Spot 1, and I want to control the intensity of this, and I'm going to change it from 1 down to 0.1, so it's not very bright. And then I'm going to do a final render. It'll still calculate the preview, and then it'll go on to a final render, and we'll get a pretty good idea of the fog quality that we're trying to achieve here. Most of the time, you're going to have to go through several renders in order to get this right. Sometimes you might actually want to use the render region option to take a look at just smaller segments of your geometry so you don't have to calculate everything. 
In this case, I'm going to turn off render region, but I want to zoom in and get a little bit better idea of what I'm looking at. With my system, it actually renders and calculates the fog fairly quickly, but depending on the complexity in the scene and obviously your computer specs, it might take quite a bit more time for you to calculate the fog effects inside of your scene. But you can see with a few quick settings, we actually have a pretty good output here. It looks as if the light is turned on and that it's producing fog. One thing it doesn't have is light effects shining through the material that is our lampshade. And that's because we're using a directional light and not something like a point light. 